Hello, my name is Sean Burns and I'm going to give you an introduction to Autodesk's 123D Make. It's a fantastic bit of software. It's typically used for creating paper or card models. But we're going to take it a step further and we're going to bring it through for CNC manufacture. That's a computer regulated machine that will follow a particular tool path that 123D Make is going to determine for us. So enough talking, let's get stuck in. First of all, your, your object or your model must be saved in the STL format. So I'm going to import uh, this cantilever table that I have drawn previously. So to rotate and move, I'm just simply going to uh, press down the right uh, mouse button and I'm just dragging it around like so. And that's, going to, that's allowing me to free rotate this object. To zoom in, I'm going to roll the roller wheel, that's the middle roller wheel on the mouse. And then to pan, I'm going to press down that roller wheel and I can drag around like so. Alternatively, we can use the view cube up in the top right hand corner. Or any of these little buttons down below. And if you lose your, your orientation, if he's lost on your screen, you can simply press this little window and he's going to come straight back in again. So, that's great. So just below um, the top left hand corner of our display panel, you can see we have some default paper sizes that we can choose from. So I'm just going to set this to A2, just for now. And below that then we have our object size. By default it's set to inches, I'm going to set mine to millimeters. And I'm going to adjust my height to 120 millimeters, which, which is roughly four inches. Now, because uniform scale has been uh, selected, the width and length is going to adjust proportionally. So if I want to determine my width rather than my height, if I wanted to have it as 350 mil wide, well then my height and length will adjust accordingly. So I want this to be 120 millimeters tall. So let's run with that. So below that then we have a selection of construction techniques. We have stacked slices, interlocking slices and so on. But this is the one that I'm particularly interested in today and that's the folded panels technique. So as you can see it takes the curved object and gives this nice faceted exterior um, or faceted exterior uh, to, my, to my object. And because we have A2 size sheets selected we have two she two sheets and with the red and um, the red faces they're um, signifying errors so let me press on the sheet and we can see that these er uh, these particular slices or these cuts are, are too large for that particular sheet size we can go over here to model issues and it's pretty much going to tell us the same thing so the panel errors the parts are too large for the material and again and again yeah so each of those panels that are signified in red are too large for the material so we can go in here and we can adjust the size we can play it we can adjust by playing around with the, the different default settings or we can if you look down below because we are in the, the manufacturing settings um, area we can adjust the size of our sheet uh, to suit ourselves but first of all, let's go through here and see what we can do to maybe make this fit into, into this sheet. So if you particularly wanted an A1 size sheet, well we can adjust the height or scale of our object. So if I reduce this, uh, the height of this object, let's say down to 80 millimeters tall. Okay, so it almost fits. Let's see what issues are occurring. The joinery didn't fit. Okay, and the joinery didn't fit. Okay, so we can maybe adjust that, maybe bring it up to 100. Okay, so that fits fits nicely. So as you can see, there's a little bit of manipulation. It really does take a bit of playing around for it to suit yourself. But I want this to, to be 120 millimeters high. I'm gonna find another way to make this fit into this sheet. So to optimize the panels, we can adjust the vertex count. 
So I'm going to go up, it goes in 20 mil intervals or 20 uh, unit intervals. Okay, so the 170 vertex count fits on the A1 sheet nicely. And if I go in here to this, uh, to this particular sh display, we can see that we have 14 different um, panels that will be used to create the entire object. Okay, so below that, we can adjust the joint type. If I just bring this window back up once more, so we can see the joint type here, it's set to diamond, and that gives us this little triangle-shaped uh, tab that sticks out from the, uh, from the perimeter of, our, of each panel. We can adjust that, we can change to, I'm gonna change this to seam. You can play around with these yourselves, depending on your shape and depending on uh, your, your process, or depending on your own particular needs, you can adjust your joint type to suit yourself. So this is a joint type of a seam. And again, we have 14 different panels and we have an, an, extra, an extra, an additional uh, seam line around the, extra, uh, the perimeter of our shape. We can adjust that seam radius like so. We can bring that down to 0 0.001 inches. If I change that to millimeters, that's 0 0.0254. So now we can see that this seam line is very minuscule. I'm going to X out of that. I'm going to bring that seam line back up again. Okay. And I'm going to reduce my vertex count. I'm going to increase it again. See if I can find one that works. Okay, I'm going to go back down to 170. My seam type. I'm going to go to seam again and now we're back to 0 0.1 of an inch okay and we're going to roll with that for now I might adjust my paper size if I go into my manufacturer settings I might just make this 800, I'm going to go back to millimeters, I'm going to make it 800 by 800 square and let's see how that works. So again we have a number of different panels, it looks like we have 15, this seems to be our, our maximum number and if I go back to my joint type again, back to millimeters and I'm just going to reduce this ever so slightly. Maybe I'm just going to go to one millimeter of a seam radius and see if that reduces the number of sections or segments. Yes, it does. I'm just going to make that 0.5. So now we have six, seven different sections. If I go reduce it again to say 0.2. And we have six different sections. So I think we'll run with that. Six different pieces. We'll, we'll, that's what we're going to use to, uh, to make or to achieve our overall shape. So the dashed line is going to be our fold line. And the red line is going to be our perimeter. So in order to bring this to CNC manufacturer. I'm going to save this. I'm going to export this file as, uh, as a DXF. And then I'm going to import it into AutoCAD. I'm going to trace around those lines. It may seem tedious, but it's certainly a lot more efficient than trying to calculate uh, each of those fold lines mathematically. So I'm going to go to my get plans. I'm going to save my file type as a DXF. And I'm going to export that. And... Yes, that's fine. I'm going to export that as it is. I'm just going to call it Canty1. Save that. And then I'm going to export the mesh as an STL. So that's the overall object. I'm going to call him Canty1. And we can pick this up again in the next tutorial. Okay, I'll see you then.